what's up guys, it's says Modern Warfare here, Gamer to Advantage Chicken and welcome to JTAG Tutorials episode 17. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up and configure Xbox 360 Neighbourhood for your JTAG or RGH console. And this is a tutorial I was planning to do as like episode 9 or 10 but um, unfortunately it wasn't working properly for me. Um, I think it's because I didn't reinstall the plugin after updating to the latest dashboard. Uh, so it stopped working properly and anyway I got a few requests lately uh, so I tried it again with downloading a new plugin and now it's working so I'm able to make this tutorial for you guys and Xbox 360 Neighbourhood is one of my favourite programs it's really awesome it's kinda like FTP but it does a lot more than what FTP does and I'll, I'll show you it once we have it installed and all the cool features and stuff it has so um it's also by the way useful if you're using any kind of mods like RTE type mods real time editing um where you're basically like sending commands from the computer uh, modifying dvars from the computer and sending them to the console and stuff like that then a lot of them you do need the Xbox 360 neighborhood installed in order for it to work and but it's it's got many other uses which I'm going to be showing you so first of all what you're going to need to get is something called the Microsoft Xbox 360 software development kit um, it's quite hard to get a hold of because you're not supposed to have it unless you're like a proper Microsoft developer uh, for the Xbox which um, well I'm not um, don't know about you but uh, I'm not anyway so um, it's quite hard to get a hold of or it can be quite hard to get a hold of. I I get it from somewhere which is, shall we say, really good because there's loads and loads of links for it. Um, a lot of people try the Pirate Bay and you know torrents get taken down and stuff like that. And um, but this is the best place to get it, and I'll put it in the description. Xbox360ISO.com. And as you can see here, there's loads and loads of different versions that you can download. Um, you do not want to download the recoveries. There's stuff like extensions, recovery. The thing you want is something called SDK setup. So there's all here's all the links here. You could download it from there. Um, there's the possibility that some links might be broken, but most of them I think are up and online. There's another one. SDK setup. Let's see if we can get some Mediafire links for this. Here we go, look, SDK setup, this is the one I got, I think. And you just copy these links. I use JDownloader, of course. Uh, I'll put this in the description as well for you guys to down to use. Um, basically, go to add links, add URLs, phase URLs, and we'll check to make sure they're all online. And there we go. So, you just start downloading all of these. Once it has downloaded, obviously you want to extract part one and it will go ahead and extract every single part starting from one. And once it has fully extracted, uh, you want to, it will be in one.exe file. So once everything's extracted, you should end up with a uh, .exe that's about 1.55 gigs. Uh, here it is. So, Xbox 360 SDK and we've got 1.55 gigabytes so it's pretty big so when you double click this to open it um, give it a bit of time to actually launch alright so when it eventually launches you'll be prompted to start installing it obviously um, Microsoft Xbox 360 software development kit so click next next you may this may take a while as well So next, minimum installation, that's the only um, option I have, so we'll do that. Alright, and once we have it done, we just click finish. It'll try and view release notes, but it won't work, so you can ignore that. And it'll be installed, if you go into your programs, it'll be listed under Microsoft Xbox 360 uh, software development kit or SDK and in here there's Xbox 360 neighborhood this is all we're interested in at the moment so 
that's Xbox 360 neighborhood installed on the computer. Now we need to get it to work with the console because it's originally um, Xbox 360 neighborhood is designed for development kit consoles, not JTAGs or Recycler Chat consoles. So in order to get it to work with a JTAG console, you need to have a plugin which enables it to connect. So this plugin can be downloaded from the link in the description, which will be will link you over to here, and you download uh, using this link. And once it has downloaded, it will be in a zip file that you can just extract, and then you can get rid of the text documents. This is all we need here: xbdm.xex. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do. It's just hook up my USB and transfer this over to the JTAG. I'm not using FTP at the moment because I have um, my network set up in a specific way, so it's going to be fastest with Xbox 360 neighborhood, but it's not going to let me connect with uh, FTP. You shouldn't have that problem, though. Um, it's just the way my network's configured. So um, what we're going to do is just transfer this over to the JTAG, and I will, of course... Um, be back with you and show you what to do from there on the console. Alright guys, so once we are on the console, what you want to do is head over to XCX menu, or you can use the file browser, or if you're transferring through FTP, um, then put the xbdm.xcx file in the root of your hard drive. This is where it's want, you want it to be. In fact, that shouldn't be in there just now. So you want that xbdm.xcx in the root of your uh, hard drive, Xbox 360 hard drive. Uh, if you don't have an Xbox 360 hard drive and you're using like an external hard drive, it may still work uh, if you put it in the root of your external hard drive. But if you do have an Xbox hard drive, put it on the root of your Xbox hard drive. Um, just better that way. So, once you have done that, what we're going to do next is go into uh, Dash Launch, and I could just use Freestyle Dash, but because I'm on XCX Menu anyway, I'll just use XCX Menu to launch Dash Launch. And once we're in Dash Launch, we're going to go down to Plugins, Plugin 1, and set it, well, if you have something else in Plugin 1, doesn't matter, just select whatever plugin, but I don't have any, so I'm going to go Plugin 1, HDD. xbdm.xcx and then right bumper hover over hard drive press X to save settings save to launch.ini and now what you want to do is dashboard so that is you have now installed the plugin in order for it to work though you're gonna have to restart the console so you want to switch your console off just now and switch it back on and once it has rebooted, remember to check that you have a valid IP address, the bottom left hand corner like mine is 0 0.3 and make sure it's dynamic as well. Um, you, people get problems where the Xbox 360 neighborhood does not detect the console. So once you install the plugin you have to restart your console in order for it to be detected and it's best to have a dynamic IP address set up on both the console and your computer. Um, so it's automatic, assigned by DHCP, not manually set up. So, okay, now I'll go back to the computer and show you how to connect up with Xbox 360 Neighborhood. Alright guys, so now that we're back onto the computer and we've installed the plugin and we started the console, we're then going to go ahead and open Xbox 360 Neighborhood. Um, that should not be in there, sorry about that, move that. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click add Xbox 360 and we're going to go click on next and then we are going to type in the IP address or the Xbox 360 name. So you can type in the IP address 192.168.0.3 I think mine was. I think it's changed now to 0 0.4 but or we can type in the Xbox 360 name which is just JTAG. Uh, that's what it's set to. So click next. You can say yes to make it the default development kit and click finish. And once you do that, you should see this JTAG pop up, normal console with a little tick. 
Uh, if you were actually doing this on a dev kit console, um, that would be a black console with like a bit above it signifying a, a dev kit console. But since we're using a JTAG, we've got this just like normal white Xbox here. And I'm going to go and show you a few of the features of this um, program, why I love it so much. So if you right click on it, you can click on screen capture. And this will take a screenshot of the Xbox, a high definition screenshot and it'll open up your picture viewing program I've just got it set to Photoshop by default uh, and it saves it onto your computer and there you go I've got a screenshot of my of what's on my screen right now in my Xbox so you know if, you're, if you've made a mod menu or something you're wanting to show off something to people and you don't have a good capture card or whatever um, or you just wanting to show screenshots, this is a really good way of doing it. Um, you can just screen capture an Xbox 360 neighborhood and it will take the picture, transfer it onto your uh, computer. And it's a yeah, it's pretty high definition screenshot right there. So that's one thing. Um, you can also click reboot. Now what I'm going to do here is, um, actually no, I won't do it yet, but eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the screen into two halves. I'll have the computer on the left hand side and I'll have the actual Xbox um, on the right hand side so I can show you the difference properly. Right, so <clears throat> so I can double click on here and I get all my drives. So just like FTP I can transfer a file from the computer to the Xbox or I can transfer a file from the Xbox to the computer. And here is the other thing I like. So we can open up the volume. Um, Big drives take a while to open, but uh, it opened quite fast. And if you're using wireless, it'll be slower. If you're using wired connection, it'll be faster. Um, so it's good to try and get a wired connection for faster speed. So I've got all of my kind of files in here. So the last thing I'll show you about this program that makes it pretty damn awesome is we can go ahead and actually launch .xcx files. This is my favorite thing about it. So I'll put my stream, my live stream of the console up on the right hand side of the screen now and I'll put this uh, computer up on the left hand side of the screen. And what we'll do is find a game. So let's take, what have we got here? Let's take Black Ops 2, where's Black Ops 2? I'll just use that as an example to begin with. COD Black Ops 2. Bear in mind, if folders contain loads and loads of files, it'll take a while to open. But here we go. So I've got all the programs I can use to open these different files. And then I have a, a default.xex and mp.xex with that kind of green icon and that means we can double click on them to launch them so you should have my stream of my Xbox up on the right hand screen so just watch when I double click the default mp.xcx on the computer and as you can see the Xbox launches up Black Ops 2 multiplayer and the cool thing about this is um, you don't have to go back to Freestyle Dash or anything, you can just literally go straight into another game from the game you're currently in. So this is really handy if you've got your JTAG online with Xbox Live Stealth. You don't want to start up a homebrew program like Freestyle Dash or XEX Menu to launch your games because um, you can get banned for that because you're running a hacked XEX. So what you can do if you have Xbox 360 Neighborhood is just go straight from one game to the other. So I'm in Black Ops 2 multiplayer right now, but then say I wanted to switch to what else have we got? Um, Black Ops 2 multiplayer right now, and I'll switch it to Modern Warfare 2. Here's the default MP for Modern Warfare 2, so watch the Xbox when I double click this. 
was in Black Ops 2 multiplayer. <clears throat> and now it changes to Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. So I've gone straight from a multiplayer on one game to the multiplayer in the other game. And um, I have a DLL loaded on Modern Warfare 2, which is why I'm getting that message. Just say exit to that. And there we go, Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. So, got that. Um, let's take another example. I just love doing this, this is awesome. Remote controlling your Xbox with your computer. Let's take a different game than Call of Duty, for example. Let's go with. We got. Try Halo 3. Good old Xbox classic game right there. Uh, ooh, got a few exits here, just launch the default one. And then we start up Halo 3. So, um, yeah, it's really awesome, I think. But, um,. Awesome that you can do all of this kind of stuff. And it's not just games, of course, you can launch um, programs as well. back into JTAG, go to the hard drive this time, retail hard drive, and then I can launch something like dash launch, if I double click dash launch, installer, default XEX, I'll switch it from the game I was currently in and it should boot me straight into dash launch. So um, that's it, that is um, Xbox 360 Neighbourhood. One other thing you can do as well, if I just go back out here, if you right click on JTAG you can click reboot title which will restart whatever program or game that you were in. So that's Xbox 360 Neighbourhood, one of my favourite programs. Um, I hope you guys use it, I hope you get it working. There can be a lot of problems trying to get the console to be picked up when you add Xbox 360. I know a lot of people have problems with that. Um, but if you follow what uh, I showed you in my tutorial, you should be able to get it working. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked the video, then leave a like. If you have any questions, then leave a comment. And uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And I will hopefully see you in my next video. Yeah! yeah.